Welcome to the Idea to Launch show. My name is Lisa Zufall. I will be your host. And with me in studio today is Laura Griffith from Griffith. 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 I have such a, a, a problem with last names. I don't know why. But <laughs> thank you. I appreciate it. She is with Toastmasters, and I am so excited um, to have her in studio today because this woman is absolutely amazing. You're going to be blown away by her knowledge and just her story. So, But before we get started, I want to say a special thanks to our sponsors, um, Studio Americana. The studio that we are in right now is a professional podcasting studio in the Twin Cities for anybody who's had that dream of, hey, I want to get out there and I want my voice to be heard. So this is a great place to come. And right now, if you uh, call up Ian, the owner of Studio Americana, and, and let them know that I did a launch sent you, you will get a free demo day, which basically includes one hour in the studio, and he will help you get that set up. You can call him directly at 612-272-7970. So those of you who, again, are thinking about doing a professional podcast, Studio Americana over here in Golden Valley, Minnesota. It's a beautiful studio. Ian is highly professional. This place is rocking. So we thank our sponsor and give him a call. Tell him Idea to Launch sent you. You'll get a free demo to try it out and see what you think. Um, and that being said... Wow, thank you so much for coming out this morning. I appreciate that uh, you're spending time with us to talk about Toastmasters. Thanks for having me. Toastmasters for me has been on my bucket list, as you know, for many, many years. And um, my fear of public speaking is just, it, it, it was incredible. I didn't want to stand up. I didn't want to, I, I always pushed other people up to the stage. I could write out a speech like there's no tomorrow. I could do presentations, but I never wanted to be the one uh, front and center. And then I started meeting people and asking them, you know, how did you learn to present yourself and, and speak so eloquently? And it all came back to Toastmasters. And so I thought, one day I am going to go and sign up for Toastmasters so I can do that as well. And now you've done that. I've done that. Um, I walked in scared to death in your um, King of Kings. Yep, The club is the King Speakers. We okay. meet at King of Kings Lutheran Church in Woodbury. Yep. But there are clubs all over it's Minnesota. It's amazing. All it's over international. The world. So Toastmasters yep. International. 142 countries. Wow. And let's see, 345,000 clubs. That's amazing. So, I know just in the Twin Cities, there are probably 20 clubs. Oh, well, far more than 20. Oh, really? Yes. So wherever you are in any nook of the Twin Cities, you can probably connect with a Toastmasters. Yes. There's club. probably one in your neighborhood or at your company or in your community libraries or any community center. They're, they're everywhere. So as I set this up, and before you start telling your story, I'm just going to say what I love most about Toastmasters, awesome. and that is um, really having to think about what you're saying before you say it, mm -hmm. kind of putting that thought into your speaking and then being able to speak off the cuff. So we have table topics, which is a question that is just posed to you, and then you have to respond to it in an eloquent manner with some thought, and it has to be longer than my usual 10-second response. <laughs> <laughs> and that pushes you to really start and pause and think about what it is that you want to say and how you want to frame that up. And I think that really helps. I don't, for me, it helped kind of frame up how I wanted to present myself. Mm -hmm. And when I came to do this podcast um, for Idea to Launch, I, I credit a lot of it to what I've learned through Toastmasters. So with that, I just want to say thank you because Laura is the best. She truly is. <laughs> and if you get to see her in action and if she does one of your um, reviews, I mean, you, I'm just blown away every time you do one of my reviews. Not only does she pump you up, but she also gives you active um, actionable steps that you can take to improve your your speaking abilities and and I've stopped I've stopped for the most part saying ums and ahs but you have gotten much better <laughs> yes <laughs> I don't think it's just me though I think it's that Toastmasters program is set up our meetings to follow a general flow each club is able to get specific and tailor it to what they want to do right but Toastmasters International puts up together the program that says you should do those prepared speeches and that you should do those table topics. And then they give you tips and tricks on how to provide evaluations. It's that amazing. Yeah. It is. So it's a toolbox yes. full it's of things. 
And I like it because being an entrepreneur, it helps me when I'm speaking to people one on one to presenting at a meeting. Um, but let's let's go back to your story. And I don't, there might be somebody out there who has no idea what Toastmasters is and sure. what their purpose is. So let's start there and then we'll go over to you and how you got started in Toastmasters mm -hmm. and how you became the uh, the guru. <laughs> Well, Toastmasters International began like in 1924 with somebody who just wanted to improve public speaking. But for me, it's so much more than just public speaking. That actually scares a lot of people away. So I like to think of it as more of a communication and leadership mm -hmm. skill building yep. thing. It has the toolboxes so that you can learn all of those different things that you can do in meetings or when you actually do have to get up and give a speech, which is seldom in most of our lives. Right. But if you're at the dinner table or you're out interviewing, there are things that the things that you learn in Toastmasters can help you apply those tools to what you're doing. Right. So it's a non, it's a nonprofit organization with all of these clubs all over the world that have volunteers that come in. They join the club and they all work together in a supportive environment in order to improve it's each other's supportive. communication. Yeah. yeah, I know a lot of uh, corporate workers also. Uh, my corporate colleagues do tons of they're they're involved in Toastmasters as well. So from the corporate world, it helps you if you need to guide meetings or if you want to step up in your career. Right. right. Absolutely. It's that whole leadership and feeling confident in your voice. Exactly. And for a startup or an entrepreneur, it's the same thing. Right. I mean, really, whether you're corporate or you're an entrepreneur, either way, you have to find your voice and you have to figure out how to communicate that effectively mm -hmm. to your audience. And I would go even beyond that because when I joined Toastmasters, I was corporate America. I was leading meetings. I was giving you know, presentations in front of rooms full of people. But then I quit when I had little kids and I stayed home. And the communication that you use with your children, the leadership that you have in your family – all depend on those same types of skills. So whether you're in corporate America, if you're in I a startup, that. if you're at home, if you're in a community environment like your church, those are all places where you can use Toastmasters skills because we all need to communicate. We all need to lead. We all need to follow. Right. We need to interact. And right. so Toastmasters can help with all of those skills. So let's talk about your story since you touched on sure. that. <laughs> so you in corporate, were you a part of Toastmasters then? Or how did you find out about Toastmasters? So when I was in corporate America, I worked for Securian Financial Services. Okay. And I was a manager that had to present in front of a user group. So instead of just meeting one-on-one -on -one with people, I was going to have yeah. to get up in front of a room full of 50 to 100 people. Mm -hmm. And my boss was a Toastmaster, so he suggested that I come awesome. and join the club. Yeah. So I joined, and I was hooked immediately. Before working, I was a physics major, so I was kind of like the Big Bang Theory people. <laughs> Didn't like to talk to anybody and got into corporate America working in, with computers, so I didn't have to talk to anybody until right. I became a manager. Those skills transcended well beyond that. And you know, 19 years later, I'm still doing Toastmasters and working with different clubs and working with different people, working with middle schoolers, teaching everybody yeah, how to you, speak. Yeah, you're working with the school age kids now yes. and helping them, just introducing them to kind of the Toastmaster way. They basically get through their first three speeches during okay. a nine week program. Wow. That is, I think that's critical for our kids today. Absolutely. When they spend all their time on texts and these short messages where they don't have to think beyond those right. three words, yep. they need to be able to think about what they want to say and how they're going to say it and how to use their voice and their gestures in order to improve their Toastmaster or their speaking. Right. Their communication skills. Absolutely. You can be the brightest star on earth, but if you cannot communicate what it is that you're thinking or where you want to go or what you have, nobody knows it. Yeah. I had another Toastmaster say to a girl in one of these situations, what you have to say is important. Yeah. And that always has stuck with me because every one of us has a story to tell. And right. if we can tell it in a good way, people will listen to us and they'll understand what we're trying to say. So you have been in Toastmasters how many years? About 19. Okay. This is why she's so awesome. <laughs> 19 years. It's And you have you been part of the, the Kings? The first club that I joined was Mutual Voices. That okay. one runs out of Securian in St. Paul, and they're still an excellent club. 
Then I was, uh, mentored a club that was in Energy Park, to- okay. um, Toastmasters on a Stick, because they're the closest club to the state fair. I like it. And then I sponsored the King Speakers, which means I started the club. Okay. And the reason I did that is because I wanted to be able to speak about faith freely in an environment and to encourage other people to do that, too. It seems like even at church, people were cowering away from speaking. Okay. So uh, bringing Toastmasters to that type of an organization was important to me. But there are other people that are, you know, there's book clubs and there's parliamentary procedure clubs and there's clubs that are closed for specific corporations oh, so that secrets that. aren't shared. And there are all kinds of different Toastmasters clubs that focus on different, not just skills, but groups of people. Okay. So then does it make sense for somebody to, how does it work? So if I wanted to... Well, I know how it works, but let's tell the audience how it works. <laughs> so if I wanted to check out a Toastmasters, there's a lot of Toastmasters on Meetup, meetup.com. There are. But not all of them. Meetup is expensive because Toastmasters clubs depend on club dues. Okay. So we had Meetup for a very, very short time for our club just because we could afford it for a very, very short time. But we can't afford it long term for the amount of dues that we collect. Okay. Toastmasters.org is the best place to find a club. If you go out to that website, there's a bright yellow button that says find a club. And if you click on that, it actually will look at where you're located and it will find a, you know, a list of clubs that are all near you. That's amazing. And then does it give it a summary? Because I found you guys on Meetup. So yep. Toastmasters.org yep. will give you a summary of the clubs and what they're about. It gives you a summary of the clubs, when they meet, if they're opened or closed, if they're corporate or community. It gives that sort of a summary. Oh, that's amazing. So then for our listeners, you can, when you find one that seems to fit what you are looking for, you can attend and you're not forced to speak. What I loved about it when I first attended, I was just, my my palms were sweaty. <laughs> I was like, I don't know about this. But you're, no one is forced to speak. Correct. You can, as as a visitor, you can speak if you choose to, or you know you can just sit back and observe and see how it goes and see if it's a good fit for you. So there's no pressure. Mm-hmm. They don't, you know, make you stand up and start talking immediately. Yeah. <laughs> Generally, clubs will have their guests introduce themselves and maybe give some feedback on the club while they're there because we're all there to learn too. Mm-hmm. So if a guest comes in and says, you know, I loved this about your meeting, but I was really confused about this, then the club can respond to that. And the next time they can make the guest visit even better. Right. And it's all about learning. Absolutely. Toastmasters is about learning and growing. So everybody in that group, <clears throat> excuse me, is about lifting one another up. At least that's the feeling mm-hmm. that I get. You lift one another up and you also help one another get to that next level that they're shooting for. So it's everybody kind of supporting each other and lifting each other up to help them get to that next level. Absolutely. Whatever level you're on. Absolutely. Because I'm coming in as a beginner, but there are folks in there that have done, like, Russ. Right. But Russ has only been with the club for two years. He went that quickly through all of his you know, first speeches and developed so many skills so quickly. He came in with a lot of skills, but Toastmasters allows us to meet people where they're at and then improve upon that. Just like you, you came in with a lot of skills. You have great vocal variety. You're really fun to listen to. This is why I love her. (laughs) (laughs) But you wanted to work on ahs and ums and, you know, cohesively organizing your thoughts so that you were coherent. And so those are things that we've been able to work on with you. Yeah. It's a it's been an amazing journey. I've I've loved it and I appreciate all your feedback on that. So let's get back to um, the Toastmasters International. Why is it international? Because it operates out of 142 <laughs> different countries. <laughs> so what does that that just means that everybody around the world is working on their speech and communications? Correct. That's amazing yes. to me. Yes, they once a year that everybody that chooses to gathers at an international convention so you can get together with people from all over the world and talk about speaking, talk about leadership, go to seminars just to, you know, get even better. That's am- I think I saw a YouTube video on somebody who won a um, speech Yep, the World Championship of Public yes, Speaking. Yes, yes. Yes. And I in... thought, wow, he was incredible. And I, all I remember is he came out smoking a cigarette, and I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> but that was part of his 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 stick, his, yeah, absolutely. his communication. Yeah. By the time he was done, I think everybody was standing and applauding him because he just, 
he turned the tables with his speech. Right. You know, you thought he was coming out doing one thing, but then he ended up just inspiring so many. Yeah. And I don't even remember what it was about. All I remember is seeing him going, <laughs> that's amazing. So that's really cool. I love that. So the the other benefits that Toastmasters has to offer, besides communication, it's it's networking as well. Absolutely. There's a networking piece to it and getting to know one another, people in your community or people that you work with. I think that it really lends to that because the speeches that are given and the table topics that are answered depend on people's stories. Mm -hmm. So they share the stories that they want to share in a way that you understand them at a deeper level. And it's fellowship. It is. I know with the, the Kings, it's a fellowship. Yes. It's... Corporate clubs are a little bit more corporate-y. <laughs> right. They might focus on technical presentations more. They might focus on delivering a research paper more. A faith-infused club like ours, we're really about speech, communication, fellowship, you know, bringing a group of people together. There's a, a parliamentary procedure club in the Twin Cities that really focuses on Robert's Rules of Order. So they're teaching those people how to really lead a discussion and have discussions that follow those rules. Depending on what you're looking for, there are so many clubs around. That so that means really if I want to run to office or if I want to be a delegate or if I want to, I understand how the rules work. Exactly. Because I went to be a delegate. Oh, And I have sure. no idea what they were talking about. <laughs> like, I, I don't know. But yeah, that that's something too. If you are running for uh, public office, mm -hmm. whether it is your local mayor to the governor, I mean, if if you can't put a sentence together... No one's going to vote for you. Absolutely. And I think now is a time when ordinary people are kind of um, deciding whether or not they want to take that leap of faith and and um, help change the conversation. So if that's something that is in your heart, uh, you might want to check out Toastmasters to help refine that so that you can talk to the people. Right? Absolutely. On their level? Yeah. As we talked about, Toastmasters really does have that public speaking aspect to it. But it also has general communication aspects to mm -hmm. it. And the, the table topics, questions that you alluded to, are questions that one person comes up with at a single meeting. And then you respond for one to two minutes. You can tell the truth. You can spin the question. You just need to respond. And so what it's trying to get you to do is to think on your feet and then put together a mini speech that you deliver in one to two minutes. A lot of people learn how to stall, <laughs> and they learn all of those tricks that help you to pause and then to keep your answer short and simple. Right. Who Who is the lady? What's Att her Attracta. name? Attracta. Attracta is an amazing, talented woman. Absolutely. At our last meeting, she we didn't have a speaker. The speaker that was scheduled, for didn't whatever reason, up. didn't show up. And she did a speech on impromptu speaking. And she did it impromptu. <laughs> she did it impromptu. I mean, she she just stood up there and she went for it. And her speech was so coherent. It was so beautiful. Uh, the way that she put together the pieces right there on the spot. And she would take her pauses. And you could see her, her thinking. But as soon as her mouth opened, she would take you on that journey. Right. And it was okay. Absolutely. I mean, some people think that those pauses when you're talking or when you're speaking are uncomfortable or awkward, but sometimes it's just to give it that extra touch or to give you that time to bring up that next point. Yes. So many of us fill our pauses with ahs and ums because we don't want to lose control of the, of the speech. Our mouths don't work as quickly as our minds, or sometimes our mouths work more quickly than our minds, right. and we don't know what to do with that extra space. So we insert an ah or an um, and that really does affect our speech. If we use the, those ahs and those ums a little bit. And it's, so's. And so's and ands. There are all kinds of things that we insert. Right. If we use them just a little bit, they don't become distracting. But if we use them a lot and they become a real crutch to us, then it really interferes with our message and we're not able to get what right. we want to across. It's amazing. I didn't realize that I had a problem <laughs> 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 until I think it was when I visited and I heard, what was it, the word master. So there's, there's different roles at, mm -hmm. at Toastmasters. So your organization will have... Now you help me out here. We'll have the so the word master. The toastmaster is the MC for the meeting, mm -hmm. and that person 
facilitates the meeting. They do a lot of work behind the scenes to get the meeting set up and to make sure those roles are filled. And then they get up during the meeting, they set the tone, they make sure that people are coming up, they lead clapping, which we do an, an awful lot of just as an encouragement thing. Right. And then the word master is the, what we've given to the, the title of a couple of different roles. They You can break them up to an a counter and a grammarian. But okay. we like combining all of those things because that person is focusing on the, on your language. They're counting, not in a bad way, but they're counting your ahs and your ums. They're counting your connectors. Some people will come in and they'll do an entire speech that's literally one sentence. They don't take a breath. They don't use a period. They I use an and. <laughs> so instead of saying, I went to the park, I walked the dog, They'd say, I went to the park and I walked the dog, which is fine for two sentences. And then I got a haircut and then I went Exactly, (laughs) exactly. So that's what the word master focuses on. Another role is the timer. At Mm -hmm. Toastmasters, we're we're sticklers for time. We want to make sure that we start and we end within a certain amount of time out of respect for the people who are listening and who are attending the meetings. Right. How often do you go and you know, listen to a speech that just goes on and on and right. on, and you're like, oh, I got your point a long time ago. <laughs> so we're learning to, to make sure that what we say is being said, you know, not just quickly, but in a good amount of time yep. and in a way that you know, has a, a good opening and a good body and a good conclusion so that we have some it's good coherent, structure. It flows. The structure is there. You get the point. Absolutely. And it tells the story. So you're engaged. Right. There's actually a YouTube video out. Um, Robert? Is it Robert? It's a Kai- Kawasaki. Uh, I don't know. I'm sorry. I'll, I'll try and remember to add the link to it. But he talks about speaking as well. And he's, uh, I, I can't remember his name. But um, speeches. He talks about one, and his is amazing, uh, the way that he talks about it. He used to work at Apple. Now he's Mr. Startup Man. I think he's a co-founder or investor in um, Canva and a, and a few other things. You know, he's a dabbler. But, yeah, he came out with a YouTube video that talks about speaking, and it was, it was really good because he was basically hitting the same points. Mm-hmm. If you talk too long or if you don't have a point, you've lost your audience. And it's just fun to see him animated and doing his thing. Yeah, so I will absolutely. add a link onto the this podcast so people can catch that as well if they would like to. But awesome. I'm sorry to interrupt. Oh, Go no ahead. Worries. <laughs> Obviously, we have speakers. Those are the people that are preparing a message that they want to present. And the message can be absolutely anything. They, the first projects that you work on are working on those fundamentals of speaking. So things like <clears throat> using your voice and using gestures. And then beyond that, once the speaker has finished those 10 speeches, then they can go off and, and explore things like communicating on television or speaking to inform or speaking with humor, entertaining. There's a whole bunch of different focuses that people can take on. Right. And they all are a different aspect of speaking. After the prepared speeches, we typically do our table topic se- section, which is all about those impromptu questions. And I think those are the funnest part of the meeting just because, Me too. you know, one, you don't know what the questions are going to be. You don't know if they're going to be easy or hard. You don't know what the responses are going to be. I love the responses. Yeah, they're always entertaining. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes the questions are very off the wall just to get you thinking. Mm-hmm. You know, so much of Toastmasters is practicing what you're going to use in another situation. So if we can make it harder than what that normal situation is going to be, we can prepare you better for those situations that might come up. I love up. that. And it's so true. Yeah, I believe I really believe it is. And then our evaluators get a turn. The evaluators are the people that are providing feedback. They're sh- sharing what they saw in the speech, mm-hmm. how they were impacted, what things they thought the speaker did very well, and then challenging the speaker to improve upon whatever they just did by adding something to their speech or maybe restructuring something in their speech, giving them some ideas for the next time so that the next right. speech is even better. Yep. And I love that because they're actionable items. And the my, my evaluations or my evaluators have always been very, it's, it's a kind critique. In other words, you're walking away feeling even stronger than when you walked in that day. We always emphasize that it is your opinion 
and that there is always more good than things that should be improved, mm -hmm. and that they're not necessarily bad things that the person needs to work on. They're just things that you think might make it better. Right. And, and that's beautiful. That is beautiful. Is that it? Is that, is that all the rules? We wrap it up with a general evaluation of the meeting, and that person evaluates everybody else besides those speakers who have just received evaluations so that our Toastmaster can learn to facilitate better and our timer can learn how to use the timing tools better. The Wordmaster can learn to focus on better p uses of the English language. Okay. So everybody is learning. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. And for our startup community, the reason why I asked – Laura to come in here is simply be what we've talked about. If if you have if you are an entrepreneur or a startup and you are looking for a way to fine tune your communications or even you're thinking about pitching to an investor, you better refine your um, your speech, your your communication strategy. And the best way to do that and your and your leadership skills, mm -hmm. right? Yes. And the other thing I was going to say that we haven't touched on at all is that you know one of the things we look at in Toastmasters is who our audience is that we're speaking to. Mm -hmm. And as a startup, you're speaking to your customers, you're speaking to your employees, you're speaking to your investors. Those are three very different audiences. Very different. So your message needs to be different for each of them. Exactly. And Toastmasters helps you to think about what that message should be for each audience. That's awesome. So how can we help you? How can the Twin Cities community, the Idea to Launch followers, help you and support you? I think that you know, Toastmasters is known. If you talk to people, there will be people that know about Toastmasters, but just be aware that it's out there. A lot of corporations are huge sponsors of to Toastmasters. When I was at Securian, they were a great sponsor. They provided. And O3M is as well. Yeah. And okay. so uh, corporations can provide space. They can provide materials. They can pay some of the fees. The communities can provide space like King of Kings does for us. Right. There are different things that different organizations can do for Toastmasters. But then Toastmasters clubs need members. Members New members keep a club fresh. They bring mm -hmm. in new ideas. They add uh, layers upon layers to the club itself that make it a much more interesting club and fill those roles. You know, we typically have 10 roles to fill in every meeting. If there are only five members, then we end up taking on more than one role and we can't focus on learning a particular skill. We have right. to try to learn too. <laughs> right. So get involved. Check Absolutely. it out. At least check it out. I mean, I was just amazed. And, and I appreciate your group so much. Thank, Thank you for you. starting it. Oh, we enjoy it. I, I'm so glad you joined us. It's one us. of my favorites. <laughs> and it's called The Kings. The King Speakers the is King the one speakers. King of Kings. I just know where I need to be and when I need to be there. <laughs> the King Speakers. And it's in Woodbury. So if you want to check it out, come join us uh, Thursday nights. 7 o'clock. 7 o'clock. We'll be there and we'll be having some fun. Let's see. Uh, yeah, so that's how people can get involved or going out to the Toastmasters.org website, finding a club that's closest to them. Absolutely. What fits their needs and, and what they're looking to get out of Toastmasters. Just get connected. I, I think the biggest thing for startups is getting connected, uh, tapping into the resources that are already at your fingertips. Mm -hmm. The one question that I get asked a lot is, I don't even know where to begin. Well, just start. Start yes. somewhere. Yes. And Toastmaster is a very inexpensive way to get started yep. and to build skills that you'll use not just in business but in your life. In life. I agree with that. Oh, Laura, thank you so much for coming. Thank you for having I'm me. I'm so happy she's here. She's fantastic. <laughs> if you get a chance to uh, check out Laura at the King's Speakers uh, in Woodbury, uh, go check it out. Uh, we'd love to have you. Thank you so much. If you like this podcast, please subscribe. Uh, like, share. We appreciate you and we appreciate being here. Thank you so much and have a great day. Bye.